Jesus is sweeter than the day before him. Folks, that's a fact. That's a fact that's been true in my life. Well, we're going to uh, be in the Scripture in just a moment. I'm always encouraged when we go to the Scripture. But let me mention some things this evening by way of announcement. Uh, for the couples that are going with us on our couples retreat Friday evening. Does anyone watch TV anymore? All right, some old timers. There's two old timers. And we've asked that for the week of February 21st through 27th, you take the time that you would be doing those things, reading a newspaper or whatever it would be in your case, and devote that time to uh, doing business with the Lord and allowing God to speak to your heart, and then spend the time in evening services. And you'd be amazed how much time you have if you just take the clutter time out of your life. For one week, it'll be a blessing to you, and you'll get so much more out of it. So I want to challenge you to do that as well. I can't make anyone, but uh, I'd like to challenge you to do that. Um, that's all I want to mention tonight by way of an hour. Brother? The testimony service. When yes, sir. The 13th of February, Salvation Celebration. Thank you for reminding me about that. It's hard when you're going off memory. Somebody took my bulletin. <laughs> so, uh, Brother Ken, you took my bulletin, didn't you? No, I didn't. Sir. Yeah. He always okay, claims yeah, me. I, I took your bulletin. I knew it. Uh, February 13th. That's an old one. Oh, it is? Yeah. Is this, is this, is this Yes, ma'am, but it's fine. Oh. I really don't need it. I'm just giving it. Okay. That's just an opportunity to give Brother Kent a hard time. He gave me a hard time most of the day today, so I thought I'd get back at him. Anyway. <laughs> All right. February 13th is a salvation celebration. This is going to be a good time. This is for everyone. This is for you. This is for all your friends and for all of your family. And we are going to have two categories of a chili cook-off. First category is, uh, what do they call it, bland? Uh, the bland category. In other words, the tasteless category. And the other category will be the spicy. So there will be the bland and there will be the spicy. And <laughs> that's the way I see it. You know, so anyway, so there will be the real chili and then the bland chili. So spicy and bland. And you, you enter yours in the category that you think it stands the best chance to win. Now, this, let me just say this. Spicy doesn't mean the very hottest chili wins. It means the best tasting spicy chili, okay? So, you know, you may boil down 3,000 habanero peppers and, and make it so hot that it'll peel your skin off when you sniff it. Uh, that's not the point. The point is the best tasting spicy and the best tasting. Is there a better word than bland? Mild. Mild, Mild. yeah. That's true. Yeah. Mild. I just like to offer a little disdain for chili that doesn't have any spice to it. But anyway, mild. Mild chili and spice. Anyway, those are the two uh, categories. There will be fixings that I'll make sure are there. We're going to have potatoes and, and everything that ought to go with a good potato in order to load that thing up and make it tasty. Might even have sweet potatoes. I don't know about that, though. Um, anyway, so chili and potato cook-off. That's the food part. We'll have a contest. We'll, everyone there gets to judge, uh, gets to offer a vote. Not allowed to vote for yourself. I'll know if you do. Um, then, uh, well, but before we have the, the judge, or before we have the winners of the chili cook-off, though, we're going to have a salvation celebration, and every person there is going to have the opportunity to share the time when they met the Lord, or share the time when they were saved. And what a wonderful opportunity this is. Now, friend, I want to say this. Invite people that have never trusted Christ as their Savior to come and hear about how you got saved and how that everyone here does. You know, a lot of people think they're going to heaven, and the way they think about it is this. Well, God kind of knows I'm a pretty good fellow. And I'm really planning on His overlooking all my not goodness. <laughs> and I'm going to stand before Holy God, and He's going to either feel sorry for me, or He's going to just be convinced that I'm good, and He's going to let me in heaven. The fact is, God knows every person's heart, and He knows that every person's heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And uh, He says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And based on that, the only thing that God will let anyone into heaven for is for the precious sacrifice of what Jesus did when he became sin for them. God never forgives sin for any other reason than that he judged it in the person of Jesus Christ. And if you could share how that you came to God, you asked God to save you, and he did, because you asked him to because of what Jesus did when he took your place. Friend, that's a, that is a time or a life-changing experience for me. And so we're going to share that. It's going to be a good time. And I'm telling you, you'll remember what it was like when you got saved. And it'll just be a joy-filled, fun-packed evening. A lot of fun. Okay, that's February 13th. Thank you for reminding me about that. I knew there was something. All right, we're going to ask uh, Brother Alex to come. And uh, we're going to take up the offering this evening.
For the folks that will be visiting with us tonight, let me just say a word to you about the offering in our church. Uh, there are many ways that churches have of, I, don't, I feel like it's scamming people out of their money. And uh, I, watch, I watch what some preachers and different individuals, if you want to call them that, on television do, and I think they're a bunch of charlatans and they're taking advantage of folks. Let me tell you why in our church we take up an offering. We take up an offering because the scripture says on the first day of the week, let every man lay him by him in store, according as the Lord hath prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. And that's speaking of the Lord's Day or of Sunday. It's speaking of the church service and how that the appropriate way for a church to uh, support itself is through the collection for the saints. In other words, a giving uh, for the ministering uh, work of the church. And... Uh, that is supposed to be done on Sunday or supposed to be done in church services. Here's the reason why. It's inappropriate, first of all, for a church to be supported by anything other than God's people. It's amazing to me the shameless individuals that will stand on a street corner and ask for money to support their church from people that are perfect strangers and don't even know the Lord. And I'm amazed. I, my thought is this. If your church is not worth supporting to the people that go there, why in the world would you think someone else would support it? And so for that reason, we'll never have a fundraiser at Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church to, to ask people that don't go to this ministry to support this church. Folks, if it's not worth our paying for, then it's probably uh, something ought to change about it. I think you'd agree with that. First reason, though, we take up an offering is because the Bible says to. That's why we do it. And if there were no other reason than that, then we'd still take up an offering. I think that's a good enough reason. Uh, but uh, if you're visiting with us tonight... And you say, no one told me about an offering, and nobody said I'd be asked to give. And the reason for that is that no one has asked you to, to give. And the offering is the responsibility of the folks in this local church. If you're here and you're our guest, we're delighted that you're here, and we don't want to make you uncomfortable as we take up the offering by making you feel as though we would ask you to give. We certainly wouldn't. If you'd like to worship the Lord through giving, please feel free to do so, but please don't feel pressure to do so. And I think that's all we need to say about that in order to make sure that everyone understands to those of us that are part of Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church, uh, you pray and you ask the Lord what He would have you to do, and you be faithful, be a faithful steward. And, uh, you know, whatever He lays on your heart, that's what we'd ask you to give this evening. You do that, and this ministry will have everything that God wants it to have for the work here. Heavenly Father, help us tonight as we give. Lord, it is not our desire to take up a large offering. It is our desire to give in a way that would please you. And so as we give tonight, we would just ask that, first of all, that you would very plainly speak to our hearts and show us what uh, we have that you would have us to allocate to this offering. As we do so, Lord, uh, help us in our hearts to be willing to be faithful and to trust you for the grace to give. And God, we ask that you would receive it, and that it would be to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.